What's up, beautiful people? Dr. Duane here, and welcome to another installment of Apologia. Apologia is our apologetics platform where we discuss all things apologetics so that we can ensure we have a reason defense of the faith. Now, in this installment, we're going to be talking about one of the most popular uh, questions, if you will, in Christian apologetics. It is the issue of what we call theodicy, or if God is good, why is there evil in the earth? And so we're going to discuss that from a biblical standpoint, as well as a facts-based standpoint, to ensure we can have an answer to this question. Now, a lot of times when we approach this question, a lot of times we get nervous and some Christians even get offended. But what I want you to understand is this question, or really any question for that matter, does not dislodge God. And this question in particular actually proves the existence of God. And I want to tell you why. If God is good, why is there evil? In order for you to believe or someone to believe in an absolute moral law or what we call good, you must believe, even if it's subconsciously, in an absolute moral law giver. Walk with me. Simply put, if you believe in the law or the idea of good, someone has to establish that definition or that standard of good. Here's why. Everyone cannot have their own definition of good for it to be a true definition. So this question does not dislodge God in any way. It actually proves his existence. And inherent in the actual question is the proof that God is the standard bearer for good. He is the absolute moral law giver. Rabbi Zacharias, one of my favorite thinkers when it comes to Christian apologetics, he makes a profound statement concerning this issue of theodicy. And he says this, the ultimate ethic in the universe is love. Now, in order for love to authentically be love, it must include the element of will. If God makes us love him, then it's not really love. It ceases to be love. It can be control, manipulation, domination, but it is not love. If I have to make my wife love me, it ceases to be love. But if the ultimate ethic is love, then walk with me, then the greatest gift that God can give mankind is the ability then to choose to respond to his love. So then one of the greatest gifts that we have as mankind or as humanity is the gift of choice. We get to choose to respond to his love and live according to his way, his rule, and his intent. Now, herein lies the caveat. With the greatest gift of choice, there is also the greatest possible calamity because then we can choose to behave in a way that does not, or that is not rooted in his love. And this is why then we find evil in the earth it's because of this element of choice. Adam and Eve chose in the garden. And today choices are still being made that are not rooted in that highest ethic of love. So here's what we need to know. While we do have the option of choice, we do not get the option of consequence or to choose consequence. Consequence is the soul responsibility of the sovereign or the one who establishes the law. So God is real and evil is real as a result of choice. And the human heart must be able to recognize that which is good and that which is evil and respond or choose that which is good. If we don't have the ability to do that, then we would live in the world with no concrete expression 
where you can choose bad with no consequence. But get this, you wouldn't really believe bad was bad if there were not for the consequence attached to bad. The reason we know it's bad is because of the outcome of bad. Y'all walking with me? I want us to consider this scripture because this is a highly quoted scripture that people use as an argument against the, the Odyssey. And it's the scripture in Isaiah 45 and 7 where he, where he makes this statement, I create good and I create evil. Now, many use this scripture to attempt to justify God being this evil masochist or this misanthropic being who just wants to see the world suffer. Boo. That's not the God that we serve. That's actually not what the text is saying at all. Contextually speaking, the text is speaking because of the influence of the God Baal at that time. Now, Baal was a popular deity that they worshiped and they believed Baal to be the God of fertility, the God of weather, and the God of storms. And they would worship him so that they can get good weather. So God comes and he demonstrates his power over and against Baal by releasing rains and storms. And he's saying that this all belongs to me. I create calamity or evil or storms and I create peace. God is not talking about this idea of making people suffer in the text. He's talking about his power overall. So this idea of the Odyssey is not a result of God not being perfect or good. It is the reality that in his love, we get the option to choose. Again, Lucifer made a choice. Adam and Eve made a choice. You and I get to make a choice. God's power is not uh, negated in this reality. Remember this, we get the right to choose our actions, but not our consequences. It is his sole right and responsibility. So why don't we encourage and continue to witness to people to choose good, to choose this highest, highest ethic of love? then the world would be a better place. God is God. God is good. and He will always reign supreme. Hey, that's our time together. Thank you for hanging out with me. I can't wait to see you next time. I love you. We'll be back. Peace.